Hey guys, welcome back to XTA. Today we're going to take a look at a widget that will give you access to your most frequently used applications on your system. Let's check it out. The application we're looking at today is called the MRU, the most recently used widget. And the way it looks essentially is it's a grid of applications that you've recently used. This is different than your recently used system because you can actually clear this and you can open it up again. We have nothing. I'm using uh, OmniSwitch here, so that's why it looks different than a normal system. But you'll notice here essentially is that that list gets updated and as, as I'm using application, it changes. And the beauty of it is if you have a set of apps that are your core apps that you use all the time, it will more than likely to be in this list making it very functional for you to just have quick access to your apps without having to actually look for them so the example would be here let's say i go back into my google plus i've launched the application this is the review that just went up uh, today and then uh, i'll go ahead and go in and let's say go to the google play store and again i'll go back home you'll notice as the list itself has a refresh rate so it went ahead and updated and it just showed the last two recently used application you can expand it and add more things so we'll go ahead and get into the actual settings for this uh, there is a pro and a, a free version we are currently looking at the free version of the application you're able to go premium through the app you have the ability of blacklisting certain applications of what you show. You can show the count, uh, the rows, and force the right or left, and then the vertical alignment. Those are things you can set within the application. Um, so we'll close this. Most recently used, obviously, these are the applications that you want to be pulling on. Uh, you do have the ability by default to turn around to have a vibration. So when you select something, it vibrates as you're selecting it. And then depending on how your experience of usage on this if you're not a heavy user meaning switching a lot of applications you can change the update rate to be as slow as possible which is two times a minute i changed it to be 10 times a minute for the video just so you guys could see things at a normal re a refresh rate by default it does come as a moderate six times a minute uh, if you notice battery concerns obviously that's where you can actually help a little bit the other thing that you're also able to do here is set the customization as far as the background you can change the color here uh, we'll go back here and there are options within the pro version to be able to have a transparent uh, background so that it matches your, your uh, you know, obviously your background. Uh, icon size, icon pack, uh, you're also able to select the icon pack within the pro version. Uh, and then the ability also to change the label behind the actual icons themselves. Uh, and the last thing we get here just about the, uh, the developer, we have the ability of sending crash reports if you're having experience or if you're experiencing issues. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty simple from the setup. Once you have it on, you add it as a normal widget to your uh, to your lock screen uh, from your system. This is Lollipop, so that's how you'd be adding it. So that's the lock screen. And then that's it. You can interact with it wherever you want. I find it very functional for me to be on the right side as it is my mo most recent used application. The application works pretty well. I like the way it works. It's simple. You just install the application, add the widget to your home screen, and then customize it from there. The customization options that you get within the free version are pretty good and stands on its own. And that's why I recommend if you'd like the application and you'd like to maybe do further customization, maybe using a custom icon pack or making the background transparent. Those are things you could do by going to the pro version and which I do recommend if you like the application and you want to support the developer, I recommend you upgrading to the pro version there. Uh, the functionality of this application really is what makes it shine. It's simple in the sense of it's just a widget. Uh, but the functionality of it, on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, I find myself not using more than maybe three to four apps. More than likely, those apps will be in that most recent functionality. So as long as they're in there, it really saves me time from having to go hunt for that application or add more apps or shortcuts to my home screen and folders and so on. So from the sense of organization, it really works very well. Uh, it could make it a time saver for you and it works really nice. If you find it impacting your performance as far as battery because it has a frequency customization option as well, you can reduce it to go down to about maybe checking twice a minute. It doesn't have to be as fast as 10, 10 times a minute, which is what I was showing for the video. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is just so that it updates quickly for me to show you guys the impact of what I did. Uh, last but not least, again, if you like this application, please let me know if you've used other applications that are similar in this. Of course, our recent apps doesn't really function in that way because it just shows us the recent applications, not the recently used ones, so, or most frequently used one, I guess that would be a better way. Um, as usual, like and subscribe to this channel, like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys soon.